I promised that I would do a final video on my observations on my trip to Columbia. And so here we go. Here's your story, let's begin. The water's fine, come on, dive in. The future's here, it's right before your eyes. I promise you it's sheer coincidence. I came up with my top 10 observations. The first thing I noticed was the quality of the roads. The roads are, for the most, the main roads are wide, spacious, uh, well-marked, well-maintained, grass-cut. The main roads, we didn't run into any potholes that I recall. They were all smooth. It almost looked like roads all over the place have been done a year ago. Uh, obviously that's not the case, but um, they're very well maintained. The next thing you notice is the sheer number of the military and the police everywhere you go. Every town I went through had a military base and the military is prominent. They're not behind a wall somewhere where you can't see them. There will be dozens of them walking around, standing guard, well-equipped, well-armed. Um, so you might think that might feel oppressive, and, and maybe it would to some people. I lived in Columbia during the time of the FARC. I lived when it was the Wild West times 10, when it was a dangerous place. And so seeing all this military and police actually made me feel comfortable and secure. And that's really the point. They're not oppressive. They're not uh, power crazed. They're not abusing the people. They're actually very friendly. They're there for the protection of the people to make sure that the FARC and those criminals, the narco criminals, don't get a foothold again in these places of civilization. Uh, it was gratifying to see. They came on the bus and they checked um, our passports, our ID, to make sure there wasn't anybody on the bus before it left that shouldn't be on the bus that might call us, cause us danger. They certainly were very friendly, they were smiling, but they were, do they were there to do a job. And uh, I appreciated it and I tend not to like a place where there's too much military and police, but uh, like I said, having lived there before, with the issues that were there, it was gratifying to see. So today we've got chicken foot soup. I don't know, some kind of meat, seco de carne, I think. <clears throat> and pineapple juice that's really watered down and brown. I mean, it's okay, but this is not an award-winning lunch. Another thing that you'll notice, and this is somewhat in contrast to Ecuador, was, was the wealth in the country. Uh, not just in the roads and the quality of the roads and the maintenance of everything, but while you have a, you have a good sized part of the population that lives in poverty, like in every country in this world, unfortunately, there will always be poor. But there's opportunity going on in Colombia and you can see that in a very strong, vibrant middle class that is evidently the majority of the country now. Uh, certainly a good thing to see. driving down the road and the buses, um, looking out the window, you'll see these very large ranches with cattle and other livestock and, and some farming, but primarily these are ranches. And they will go on for miles and miles, and then there'll be a, a break of a little village and then another uh, ranch. And you see this throughout from uh, not too far from the border, all the way to where I went in Armenia, there's ranches everywhere. 
It's a country full of cowboys. Now, I specifically went to Armenia. I lived in Pereira before, but um, Armenia is right next door. It's, what, maybe a half an hour drive away. And I spent a fair amount of time in Armenia simply because it's such a beautiful place in Colombia. And going back, that's where I wanted to go. And the differences are really striking. It was beautiful before. It was beautiful because of the countryside, uh, the sheer majesty of it all. It just, I, you can't even describe it. It's like going through the Andes in Ecuador. It's just absolutely stunningly beautiful. Pictures will never do it justice. You have to be there. That's still there. On the other hand, the city of Armenia has turned into this jewel in the mountains. It's a modern, vibrant, happy, friendly city with a whole bunch of new buildings, particularly these new um, apartment skyscrapers. And I show some of those in the video. They weren't there before. There's a, there's a boom going on in Armenia. It's evident that the economy is booming. And when you look it up, you'll see that that's one of the places in Colombia that has greatly benefited from the new trade agreement. Another thing you'll notice in Armenia, the English speakers, it, it's just grown so much. I never found anybody to speak English 15 years ago. Now there's English schools all over the city. There's bunches of English uh, schools. And you will find in a lot of places you go that they either speak English, they understand English, or they at least know some of the words. That was never, it was never like that before. The range of goods and foods in Armenia is stunning. When I was there before, it was all local, basic stuff. Uh, you didn't see much in the line of supermarkets. I recall there was one. Uh, I may not be correct, but I remember there being one. And Pereira was, was similar. There are only a couple. Pereira is a city twice the size. Armenia is about 250, 300,000 people. Half the size of Cuenca. You didn't have a lot of choices and a lot of options if it didn't come from right there. Now, everything that exists in the world is available there at your fingertips. It isn't just traditional foods there, for example. You, you'll find Italian restaurants and Chinese restaurants and Japanese restaurants. And I don't mean Colombian Italian, Colombian Chinese, Colombian. I mean, you will find authentic other types of foods for such a short period of time which 15 years is just a blink of an eye this place has transformed into a world-class city in my opinion be it a small one and that goes to the quality of the food now when I lived there before I was always in my mind complaining about how bland the food was the food was okay I mean a piece of beef or a chicken they were all okay, but everything was very bland. They didn't even use black pepper. And that's not a lot different today. The quality of the food, what's available to you, particularly Armenia, and one of the reasons I like to go to Armenia is their food was better. And they also have this thing about any meat should be cooked on charcoal. Well, I'm there, I'm with you. And that's the way it is in Armenia. Everything I had in the week that I was there was absolutely delicious. I found nothing lacking. And now, today, you'll find that they actually cook with uh, some spices, and on the table you'll find hot sauces, things that didn't exist before.
a lot of cleaning going on in town. I think because it's a nice day and uh, during the rain, they just didn't get to it that much. Number seven, the amazing value of the dollar in Colombia. It's, it's almost crazy. It's, in Colombia, they don't notice anything really different because they're living in the same economy. But the dollar is very strong, uh, particularly right now. And so when you go there, your money is worth so much more than it was a while back. And so you're going to find a, a rental that might have been $400 to be $250 now. As in, to, to them, it's still the same peso, nothing has changed. But if you have dollars and you go in and you change that to pesos, there's so much more value to it. It was shocking how little I spent while I was in Colombia. I would spend three times that here in Ecuador and six times that if I were in the United States. Number eight, this was actually a bit of a surprise. That area of Colombia was always had a little place in my heart or a big place because everybody I met when I was there and I met a lot of people, hundreds of people, they were all amazingly friendly, helpful, they went out of their way to be kind. They didn't just, you didn't just walk down the street and see people walking down the street. People will interact with you. They want to get to know you. They want to know what's going on with you. Colombia is not a culture that has some U.S. fetish or white person fetish like, like the Philippines or a culture that's there trying to get your money, which is what I found in the times I went to Mexico, where you almost feel like prey and you have to watch. It's nothing like that at all. Uh, I don't think they could care two wits about what kind of money you have in your pocket. I was somewhat fearful, and it was one of the main reasons I, I really wanted to go back, that over time maybe that had changed. It's almost like a naive innocence in a way. I was afraid that that's what I was going to find. That would be such a sad thing. It's still like that. Nice day for a stroll down to the park. I haven't been down here in a while because it rains all the time. It rained yesterday, but uh, today, as you can see, it's a beautiful day. Number nine, sheer volume of motorcycles. Oh my God, it's crazy. 15 years ago, there were motorcycles. They were few and far between. You had to wear these fluorescent vests and um, you couldn't have anything over, I think it was a 250cc. There were restrictions. I, I don't know if that was it, but there were restrictions and you didn't see very many. Today, because of the increased wealth, I would assume, you see motorcycles everywhere. When you look in those videos, you can't look at a video without seeing hundreds of motorcycles, places for them to park in volume. And you see endless females on motorcycles. It's, it's, it's such a striking thing. I haven't seen that many motorcycles out on the road since I was in Asia. It's, it's just amazing how many motorcycles are out there. And it doesn't appear that there's restrictions because I saw Harley Davidson's. I saw big bore, big size, 1700 cc Japanese bikes. I saw big motorcycles as well as the small motorcycles. And because of the open trade they have, you can buy Yamaha and Honda and not break the bank. So you can actually buy quality motorcycles for a reasonable price. I found that if you wanted a mid-sized motorcycle, say a Honda, you could pick one up for $1,000, $1,500. It's only a year or two old. That's just amazing. Here in Ecuador, that same motorcycle would be a grand. And the last thing, it's kind of a combination of two things. The buses, I mentioned this in one of the videos, where they use half-size buses around the town, which is really good. It doesn't bottle up traffic. And while you'll see Puff of Black every once in a while going up a hill, 
for the most part, you don't see anything from these buses. They are very clean. I was sitting in a restaurant that's an open restaurant, which is typical there. It's the weather is just so nice you don't need you don't need walls. So I'm sitting on the veranda of this restaurant having my carbonated water and I'm watching, I'm doing a time lapse video, and I'm watching these buses go by and they're not affecting the traffic in any negative way. They flow right with the traffic because they're small. I realized that I'm there next to this busy intersection and I could take a deep breath and all I smell is clean air. That was nice. Um, when you go to downtown Cuenca, you're going to get a mouthful of fumes. Uh, you walk down the sidewalk, a bus goes by, and you're going to choke for a while. You know, it's a, it's a downside. It's one of the downsides. It's not like that all the time in Cuenca or everywhere in Cuenca. And where I live, it's not like that at all. To be in the heart of that city, sitting on one of the busy intersections, and have air just as clean as I'm breathing right now here out in the country in Ecuador was was stunning. It was amazing. Um, it goes to the care that they put into the maintenance of the buses, and I, I give them I give them high marks for that. So those are my main observations of Colombia. If you have any particular questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, send me a message, and I try to read them all. I I get so many now, it's hard to keep up with them. Some get past me and I, I just don't notice them. Uh, you can also email me directly. I'm always going to see the email. Thank you for all the subscriptions, uh, particularly over this series. I've got a lot of uh, new subscribers. I appreciate that. I appreciate all the likes you've been giving. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this series. I, have a, I had a blast doing it and I'm going back in a few weeks. It won't be a series like this, but for my sake, I'm going back in a few weeks. It was just a lot of fun. You know you could. <laughs> I hope this helps you if you decide to go take a visit. I highly recommend you do. If you're living here in Ecuador, for example, Go spend a week there, just just to enjoy the difference. So when you come back, I, I was so happy to be home when I got home, just like when you go on any trip. But you know, wherever you lived in the United States or Canada or England or wherever you were and where you lived at that time, you would go on vacation and you would go to a place that was stunningly beautiful and wonderful and a lot of fun, but you'd get back home, tired from that trip, and so happy to be home and crawl into your own bed. And I had those same feelings. Uh, I get over and over and over again, and I've answered this a number of times, am I going to move to Colombia? I chose Ecuador, I'm here, I'm happy. I don't intend to move. I will move if I can't resolve this healthcare issue. I simply cannot afford to throw somewhere between two and $300 a month into the garbage. I can't do that. Uh, I won't do that. I've been given some hope that it will be resolved, and I hope it is. If it's not, I will move. If it's resolved, I'm here, I'm home, and I'm happy to be here. And so that's it. No more Columbia for a while.